Why you have to have one like this with a magnet on the back? Why is that? I'm one of those butlers. I'll be like. Oh, you know the good thing about this. <laughs> Welcome to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoatings. This episode of Sam's Garage, Sam and the boys mock up a new brake pedal and taillights in the Jeep Rock Crawler. Sam and Travis also installed the new seats in the Jeep. Sam goes into detail on the autometer gauges used in the GTO. And lastly, Sam and Doug recap all of the work completed in the Alpha One GTO project. Kevin and Travis help Sam install a few new accessories on the Jeep Rock Crawler. The boys have taken one of the brake pedals offered by Low Car Performance and modified it to fit on the Jeep. Kevin also gives us a sneak peek of some new brake lights they've been working on recently. Man, those are some good looking steering wheels. Which one are we going to put on the Cadillac, Travis? I don't know. Which one do you think you like? I this? like that one. Do you? I think you should like this one. Mm -hmm. Matches the Cadillac. Matches the Cadillac. Perfect. Satin and gloss in the middle. Look, well, satin and some. Shade in the outside looks yeah, good. Absolutely. You know, we could always go with a pink leather. <laughs> really like set that. it off. Or pink stitching for me, right? Yeah, we can always do <laughs> custom leather wraps. We can do custom stitching and all kinds of stuff like that. I love the brake pedal. It reminds me of the old days, but you guys have really put some quality in yours. Yeah, I mean, w this is a, a pedal we've been offering for, you know, muscle cars and such. Right. I really wanted to use them on the Jeep. I got this nice grip and everything. I had Travis modify this to fit the brake pad in there. So now you got them for Wilwood brake pedals. That's and right. Pedals and and, and then like we'll that. continue that through the rest of our brake pedals so that anybody that's using that, it's a pretty popular setup. Very popular. They can have a matching set. That's very cool. Now, what about this? This looks like a Jeep tail light. Is this something you made for your Jeep? It is. This is actually in prototype phase. So this is all 3D printed. This is a normal process for right. us. We'll go through, we'll do all the CAD from our idea. So we're taking like an incandescent bulb tail light, putting a modern LED. This has got all kinds of nice diffusing so mm -hmm. that you don't see the LEDs. And it's going to be a much brighter and just a nice unit. That That's nice. And I really like this. That's like conduit. That's like a braided conduit protects mm -hmm. your wires. This is something you would want on the outside, like an old 30 series four with the headlights on the fenders. Yep. You go from the grill to the headlights. You know, you're trying to get from one ca cavity to the other. Mm -hmm. So you don't want these wires. How long have you outside. had something like this? Uh, we've had those for a couple decades. You know, a lot of our products are pretty universal. Mm -hmm. So let's look at things from a different angle. We say these are headlight braids. What do you got in that coffee? A lot of cream and sugar, why is that? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a whip when it comes to coffee, man. I don't like it totally dark, you know what I'm saying? Is it I just understand. the coffee? Let's not mess with the coffee. Let's just put on one of these steering wheels on the Cadillac, okay? okay. No, let's do it. Right. Come on. <laughs> So we've got the wheel wood arm off. Um, you see the, the four bolt pattern there. It comes with a, a small pad that's on it. Kevin done the Goolsby Edge Edition pad, which is this one. It won't fit on there stock. So I had to modify it. It come with a half inch uh, stud on the back. So I just machined that off and countersunk two holes going by the old pad bolt pattern. This is a prototype, of course, so we're going to have to take it back, do some machining. That way it'll bolt on really nice. So that's pretty much what it'll look like when it'll all be done and we have the pad. So you can see what I was talking about with, you know, this is the factory one with those mm -hmm. incandescent bulbs. Right. These uh, poison spider corners come with like a round cutout for like a trailer tail light and like rubber hold it in. And a lot of guys do that, it's pretty popular. But this one will mount in the factory location. It's got the factory mounting holes and get everything where you want it. And that's why I'm saying on this one, you know, we're going to be out pretty heavy duty. So I'll probably flush mount these ones mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we are working on 
you know, taillights for that Rubicon, mm -hmm. the 392. Yeah. So we'll have this design in that shape and function. That's cool. That's going to look really good. I'm going to go see what Travis is doing. All right. Travis, we're almost done here. Absolutely. About time you're showing up. Well, I wanted to time it just so I don't have to do anything but look at it. Look <laughs> at that, man. That looks like Will would send it out like that. It does look nice, doesn't it? That is very nice. But you know what? I changed my mind. I want that steering wheel. Look at that one, man. It does look nice. Nice grips, thick, short. Colors will match the Cadillac. How do I get one? Can I just take it off this guy? You better talk to Kevin about this. We won't tell him anything. Oh. It's going to be done in a little yeah, well, bit, so he won't even ranch. know. Let's do it. <laughs>we ran across an issue where we lined up dead on the bolts for the roll cage. So we'll either jog this, we'll work around it. We can move these, you know, nothing set in stone. That's why it's always important to, in mock-up, to put a couple of tacks. Very easy for you guys to pull that off, remove 100%. it, re-engineer it. Well, had it been a real weld, it would have been a real bear. That's why everything on this Jeep is partially done, not yeah. fully done. <laughs> so. well, let's grab the rear seat and put that in. Yeah. All right, Sam, let's put yours in first because it'll probably take both of us to get that thing lined up. With as tight as everything has been, go towards you at the bottom. And being the way I am, my original plan was to have a back seat. Right. So I wouldn't give it up. Now, it's gonna take an awfully small adult, <laughs> a child or a dog to fill that seat. We're likely not gonna do anything hardcore with somebody back there, so. That's a nice fit. Nice and tight, safe and secure. That's right. Now, they were a little heavy. You got something going on in these seats? So, just for you yeah. and your softness. Of course. I had heat seaters installed. <laughs> there you go. You don't want me cold out there in Utah. That's right. I'm going to need you on the other side there, Chief. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> I should have you lined up. There we go. There we go. Maybe get mine back a little bit further. You see the hole on mine? Go forward, right, down, right, there. Now you may have noticed these are not adjustable. No. But they are, they go back and forth. Yes, the, the plan in the future is to add, them a, on slides. add a rail and put them on slides. What about the height of it? The height of it, I put them at an angle mm -hmm. so that as it we goes forward, you get a little bit. But your head will give you room enough for putting a rail under here? Yeah. Right there, that rock right there, go over it. Go over it. Oh, wow. Man, that is awesome. It rides pretty good. Right over it, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, this is so comfortable and cool. You think of how much we've come along in the last year, both you and Travis working on it in low car, yeah. and us working on it in this shop, really is awesome. You know, it's a shame I had to go get a new steering wheel. Somebody stole my steering wheel. <laughs> well, I liked it. What do you want me to say? <laughs> it, was, right. it was awesome. But you know, this is cool. I can't wait to go to Moab. I can't wait to go out there. The e-brake worked out really well. The shifter location worked out well, because here we are in the seats. That's right. And everything seems cool. Everything's in it's reach. It's comfortable for you and me. Yeah, the transmissions, you know, it's going to function great. The transfer case is going to give us all the range we need. You know, I can't say enough about, you know, how much I appreciate the help. Uh, no problem. Travis, thank you so much. I can't wait to get this thing of Jeep Invasion next year. And Travis, you did bring the Grey Poupon, right? Absolutely. Cool. Don't get any on the seats. <laughs> Don't leather. worry.
Sam shows off the autometer gauges used in Doug's Alpha 1 GTO. He decided to go with the vintage look to match the theme of the project. Autometer offers a wide range of electric and mechanical gauges to fit any application. You know, we have a lot of money in our projects. Take this GTO project, for instance. Doug has spent a lot of money making this perfect engine transmission interior. When you have an investment this big, you want to make sure to protect that investment, and that's going to be in the way of instrumentation. That gives you peace of mind. You want to use quality instruments as far as the gauges go, and you want them to be accurate. In my opinion, I want them to be electronic as well. That way, when you're going down the road and whatever that instrument panel is telling you, you can take to the bank, you have peace of mind knowing it's gonna be accurate, and in case anything ever happens, especially an oil pressure issue, you pull over, get a tow truck, save your investment. Now, when it comes to gauges, I love Autometer. I've used them for a long time, and in this case, I got their Vintage series, all electronic, and me personally, I have a boat, and I like to use a GPS-sensored speedometer. That way you're not worried about anything as far as the boat underneath, the water going through the pickup. When you use a GPS sensor, you put that on your dash, and you're gonna have the most accurate reading you could ever possibly have. In this case, I got a Ford engine, I got a American Powertrain transmission. I'm gonna use me a GPS autometer speedometer. That way it's gonna be accurate and a lot easier to install. Jay made me a nice aluminum bezel to go in front of a wooden background. Now I've got five slots, and in these five slots, of course, I'm gonna have RPM, speedometer, and the three most important ones after that is gonna be oil pressure, coolant temperature, and fuel level. That's gonna be important, of course. If you have extras on the side, you can use a voltage, you can do oil temperature, and you could even do fuel pressure. Now, as you can see on the back side, I pretty much made my own pigtail. I put all the grounds together. And when I say all the grounds, I included the three light grounds that are on the little gauges. The big gauges have the lights incorporated in them, so the ground is one. So I've got all my grounds together, all my powers together. My white is gonna be RPM, black is gonna be ground, red is gonna be power, yellow is gonna be fuel, green is gonna be water, and orange is gonna be pickup for the fuel gauge itself. The sending unit right here, if you guys remember, we cranked this car up a few weeks ago, and because of the space, I didn't have any room to put the sending unit right there on the part that it needs to go to for the Fords. So I made a mechanical gauge with a remote line that Autometer sells as a kit, anywhere from 24 to 48 inches. Then you can remote mount this anywhere on the chassis of the car, giving you access to it, and that way it'll be nice and safe, it'll never break off the engine. Water temperature, this engine has two spots I can get good, reliable coolant temp from. One of them the MSD has, the other one the fast EFI has. The one for the MSD I'm not gonna use because MSD only wants to see coolant temperature in order to modify the spark trim. I never modify spark trim with ECT. I always turn that modifier off anytime I'm tuning a vehicle. So in this case, I'm gonna take out the MSD ECT sensor. I don't need it. I'm gonna put in my autometer sensor so I can get a good, accurate reading for the water temperature itself. Man, that looks so good right there. And it's gonna work just as good. Autometer, not only do they have these nice vintage gauges, they've got air fuel ratio gauges, digital gauges. They've got gauges for, let's say a 57 Bel Air where you wanna replace the entire instrument cluster. They have an entire instrument cluster kit that's gonna go right in there and utilize all autometer gauges with the bezels and the wiring makes it a complete module. Very nice, and they're very accurate. They've never let me down in the 22 years I've used them. So if you guys want good, accurate instrumentation, make sure to check out Autometer. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of trimming of the fiberglass inside this dashboard in order to get that entire unit in here, and then all I gotta do is wire everything up as far as the cluster goes, and wire everything up as far as in there, the AC and all the instruments that we put inside this car. Wire everything up and we should be good to go. Sam and Doug recap all the progress they've made on the Alpha One GTO project. They spend a lot of time mocking everything up to make sure each system works together flawlessly. The GTO turned out great and Doug couldn't be happier. Well, Doug, what do you think? It turned out pretty nice, didn't it? All I can say, Sam, is wow. 
<laughs> Incredible. I'm glad you like it. You and I did a lot of work on this you car. You know, there are so many nice little fine touches on this car, this interior, the leather, the red stitching onto it. You know, really cool when we took it for a test drive. The thing that I really was amazed at was the speedometer. You used a GPS onto that. You know, in my mind, I was thinking the transmission ratios, the tire sizes, every, trying to get everything right. How are we going to calibrate it all? But that was brilliant, Sam. Yeah, I Absolutely love that brilliant. GPS speedometer. It works great in a marine application. You get miles per gallon. Two sensors up there. One of them is a speed sensor for your power steering. Uh, it gets harder, harder as you get faster. So it's got an RPM input and a speed input. That's why you got two sensors. Yeah, it's, up there. it's incredible to have it because before this car didn't have power steering when it had the other engine. It was really you had to manhandle it. And here you can drive it with two fingers. It's it, it's what a dream to drive. And it's on the column. How cool is that? I know. It's it's just wonderful. We got the rear alignment taken care of to where we can drive this thing to the alignment shop. Mm -hmm. We do have a 60s Camaro muffler coming with the one in, two out. That's stuck in shipping. The low car shifter turned out really nice. Oh on yeah, the I mean that shifts so easy mm -hmm. and smooth and. Having the hydraulic clutch on it, we're able oh. to do that instead of the old mechanical, which was always a bear to try to make work. You know, that just worked out fabulous. Five-speed transmission, we got overdrive into it. The power on this thing, when we ran it out there and we just put our foot in the, the throttle a little bit, it was incredible what happened. Yeah, <laughs> it is incredible what happened. Now, the dashboard, it looks really nice. I'm glad you decided to go with the new dash because that takes away that look from the traditional original dash. Oh, I know. Now, I, know. I did make him a makeshift uh, cover in the center console. You're going to make a new one in your 3D printer. Right. Out of billet yep. aluminum. Yep. Put vents in it. That way we can reinstall the HVAC yep. control module along with the aftermarket switch I put on there because the switch wouldn't fit in the aftermarket yep. dash. Yep. And you got to push buttons. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll model, we'll 3D model it all up, then we'll go ahead and print it out. It'll be exactly what we want. Everything will fit fit just perfectly, you know. And the other nice thing on this is the car's got AC. I do live in Oklahoma, so this is gonna help a lot on those hot summer days. You know, those, that AC was nice to have. Adapting everything onto the OEM condenser. Cannot find that condenser yeah. right now. Everything is good with it. I tested it, so we were able to reuse it. Yeah. Made new lines, showed everybody how to make a proper line, filled up the AC system. You got a low car oil dipstick right here for you because yep. the original wouldn't fit with the steering shaft that we yeah, have. You know, and when you look at this engine bay, it's, this bay looks like it was made for this motor. The way everything fits, and then we take a look at our velocity stacks. It was absolutely fabulous. Those were custom made by- Yeah, Ronnie, Buffy Ron, Borla did yep. a very awesome job there. Everything here turned out really nice. Remote oil filter housing. We got to get a battery box. There's a lot of little things we have yep. to do. Anytime you guys are building a car, the first 90% Pretty easy, it goes pretty quick, but the last 10% takes twice to three times longer than the it first does. 90%. You know, and we spent so much time mocking everything up, checking everything, and we got bit by something I would have, I've never been bit on, <laughs> on a build by a radiator. And the radiator is wonderful, but when we put the hood on, we missed it by that much. I know, half an inch. It's gonna take a lot of construction to gain that half an inch, but we're gonna do it, it's gonna turn out good. And I want to see you drive it back here next season when we start your next project. I want to see this thing drive back so we can really show everybody with the hood on and everything done, yeah, all every, cleaned up. Everything all buttoned up. Yeah, we're, we're like everybody else. We're having some supply issues, and so we're waiting for a few items to come on in. But once the items come in, I'll make sure it's all buttoned up. We'll have all the new little parts on it next season. We'll make sure we take it out for a nice drive. Absolutely. Hopefully one day we can take it out to Vegas as well. Oh, I'll be looking forward to it. I've already got a spot at my booth at SEMA. There you go.